Well, thank you for joining us on myafricanfootball.com. After a few teething problems, we finally have Mali versus Ghana up and running. Unfortunately, we do not have the sound coming from the stadium in Bamako, the national stadium. And it's nil-nil just after the midway point of this first half. And we're pleased finally to be able to bring you these images after plenty of problems trying to get them coming out of Bamako. So we haven't missed anything in these opening 28 minutes. It's still scoreless here in this crucial match between Mali and Ghana. The Eagles up against the Black Stars. Mali without a host of regular first team players, including Real Madrid's Gila Diara, Juventus's Momo Sissoko, the defenders Cedric Kante and Adama Koulibaly are also missing, as is the new call-up, the new boy, the Marseille striker, Mamadou Samasa. While for the Black Stars, they're without Suleiman Tari, their emblematic captain, Stephen Apia, their wide man, Larry Kingston, as well as the Ren striker, Asamoah Gyan. So the Serbian coach, Milovan Rajevic, just to run you through the Black Stars lineup. We have Richard Kingston in goal, the Wigan goalkeeper, John Paintsel, Harrison Affel, Eric Addo and John Mensah are in the centre of defence. John Mensah with the captain's armband, as always, with the Black Stars in midfield. Anthony Annan, Michael Essien has made it after, well, it looked for a while like he wouldn't be able to make this game after problems with a court case back in Accra, but he made his deposition on Wednesday and joined up with the squad on the Thursday, so he's there. Two first starts as well with the Black Stars. Opoku Agyamang and Quadwo Asamoa wearing the number 7 and 10 shirts respectively. It's going to be Quadwo Asamoa to take charge of this free kick with Matthew Amoa and Prince Targo as well in the starting lineup for Milovan Rajevic's side. For the home side, Mali, the Eagles, well, despite those absences we've seen, and this really is their first big match, in fact, since the 2008 African Cup of Nations in Ghana, where they've finally met one of Africa's powerhouses. They're missing those big stars, but we just saw Seydou Keita, the Champions League winner, with Barcelona on the ball, his shot flying high into the stands here. There is Seydou Keita. So in goal, it's Mohamedou Sidibe getting the nod ahead of Amadou Sidibe for the goalkeeping role. Up front, Frederick Canute, of course, the Sevilla goal machine. Twice UEFA Cup winner with Sevilla, the Spanish outfit. Top scorer in Spain, as well as African Footballer of the Year for 2000. And seven, he received his award during the 2008 can in Ghana. On the left side of the defence, there's Adam Tambura. In the middle, Suleiman Diamontene and Bakari Sumare with Drisa Diakite on the right-hand side. The number 10 for Mali, Modibo Maiga, is there alongside Seydou Keita. And in the centre of the park, Alfuseni Keita and Lasana Fani, who plays his football in Sudan with El Marek. And we can see for both these sides, Ghana winning their opening match against Benin by a goal to nil. Sudan and Mali fought out a 1-1 draw in their first match. In this third round of qualifying for the 2010 World Cup to be played in South Africa, of course. Mali looking to get the ball forward up the right-hand side. Throw taken quickly and it's inside to Fanny. Canute up the line playing the 1-2. Frederick Canute back in possession. 
Another one too, trying to involve Moribu Maiga. The overlapping run coming from Drissa Diakite. Plays his football like so many of this Mali side in the French First Division. Once the referee decided there, no call from Devine Evehe, the Cameroonian. Referee in the red shirt. Mali, they've got the ball wide out now. It's Maiga. Chance to run at John Paintsville. Maiga, he's into the area. Still Maiga, he's done brilliantly well. He tried to flick the ball back towards Canute, who was waiting to pounce, and it was plucked out of the air by Richard Kingston. But a good chance, that, for the home side. Very nicely done indeed by Modibo Maiga. John Paintsell was backing off. There is a criticism of this Ghana side. They do allow their opponents to play football. Canute with the flick on. Again, looking for Maiga. Just operating behind him there. Richard Kingston with the goal kick. Diomutene getting the ball forward. Keita trying to close down Addo. It's a nice flick on. Quadwo laying the ball back. The shot from distance deflected. Poku Agyamang was getting forward there down the left-hand side. So a bright start this in this game. Just over 10 minutes to go before the half-time break. Both sides looking to get the ball forward quickly. Looking to attack. Michael Essien. Nice little first touch from Matthew Moa. He was looking for Prince Togo. Canute gets the ball down to Maiga. Canute again. Maiga inside for Seydou Keita. Drissa Diakite. Keita again. What a season he had with Barcelona. What a side they were as well, playing some absolutely breathtaking football all the way through to the final. Seydou Keita. Used off the bench as much as anything, and by Pep Guardiola in one of those midfield roles. More often than not, in the real old fashioned defensive midfielder role, just operating in front of the defense, with of course Xavi and Iniesta playing just ahead of him. Ghana semi finalists. At the last Africa Cup of Nations, the only African side to get past the first round at the 2006 World Cup in Germany. And looking to make it back-to-back -back World Cup campaigns as well. The first place side in each of these groups, of course, in Africa will go through to the World Cup finals. It's Essien. Laying the ball off towards Anan. Canute with another intelligent layoff. Charging forward, Mamadou Diallo. The Luav striker. Despite a couple of goals towards the end of the season, he couldn't keep Luav in the top flight. That was a nice cut inside by Drissa Diakite. But just overhitting the ball, the touch a little heavy. So we see Stephen Keshi there, the Nigerian coach of the Eagles of Mali. What a player Stephen Keshi was as well for the Super Eagles. Lovely switch of play from Fane all the way across to Maiga. The overlapping run from Tambura.
But the little left backs cross up high over the crossbar. Again, it's good attacking play. They're taking the game to the Black Stars here, Mali. Milovoje Rayevac said just before this match a couple of days ago in an interview that all the pressure was on Mali. It was Ghana that had won their opening match, 1-0 against Benin. Mali needed points. And of course, Mali playing at home. And they will have to travel to Accra. Ghana currently top of the group despite that result earlier today. Which went in favour of Benin over Sudan by a goal to nil. Razak Amatoyossi getting the only goal of the game in the 21st minute to send them level on points with Ghana on three. And if there's a winner for either side here this evening, then they will move top of Group D after two matches because a win for Mali will see them move ahead of both Ghana and Benin. They'll have four points from a draw and a win if Ghana claim all three points. Then they will move three points clear of Benin and Mali will be left with just one point after two games. And they can almost start thinking about trying to grab third spot and qualify for the African Cup of Nations in Angola next year. The cross to the back post. Again, it's behind Freddie Canute. It's John Mensah that cleans up for Ghana. Eric Addo coming short for the ball and then launching it long. That's a nice run as well by Matteo Moa. No Stephen Arpier, of course, the veteran Black Stars captain. Harrison Afoul, the left back, didn't play in that 1-0 victory over Bennett. Was replaced by the youngster Samuel Nkoum, who has a place on the bench this evening. Just 19 years of age. Still plays for Ashanti Kotoko, but for how much longer? Plenty of European clubs lurking for his signature. These two sides are back in action in two weeks' time, and you can catch all of that action right here on myafricanfootball.com, hopefully without the few technical problems that we have experienced this weekend. And I assure you that those technical problems were not that of myafricanfootball.com, but problems to do with satellites and getting the international signal out of the stadiums, in fact, and into your homes. So in two weeks' time, Ghana travel to Omdurman in Sudan, while Mali will host Benin. And every match from here on in is absolutely crucial for these sides. Before this third round of qualifying began, the coach of Sudan, Stephen Constantine, said his side was six games away from the dream. And the dream for all these African sides is to play in the World Cup finals on home soil. Michael Essien has been forced in the absence of Suleiman Tari, in the absence of Stephen Arpia, to play this deep, deep role. He can't do everything. Anthony Annan at the moment playing a little bit more advanced than Michael Essien. That's a nice one too. Quadwo Asamoah trying to make space down that right flank. Lassana Fane there, wearing the number eight shirt. There's that shot. Well, it wasn't too far away either. Very good effort. 
Just over three minutes to go in this first half, but still no change to the scoring. This is a nice run here from the new boy on the block, Agyamang. Getting forward, very well dealt with indeed. Even a little bit roughly by Bakari Sumari. Plays his club football in the United States of America with the Chicago Fire. And getting the starting role in the absence of the regular central defenders, Cedric Conte and Adama Koulibaly. Really, when you look at those players missing for Stephen Keshi's side, Diara, Sissoko, Conte, Koulibaly. Just gives you some idea of the quality and potential of this Mali football club. Harrison a full free kick, says the referee. The Mali players don't like it. The foul going against Diakite. Mamadou Diallo coming across to have a word with the Cameroonian referee. Michael Essien takes over from Anthony Annan, places the ball. Will he be looking to catch out Mohamedou Sidibe? Mil Rayevac looks on. Essien wants runners across the face of goal. In the end, he was heading towards the front post. Well, it appeals for a penalty. In the Ghanaian camp, it's Quadro Asamoah that's gone down. I wouldn't mind seeing a replay of that. Here it is. I think he just got the ball first as well. He does. He got to the ball first. Had his ankles clipped. And perhaps... Going with the strictest letter of the law, that could well have been a penalty in favour of the Black Stars. Mr. Devine Avehi, not seeing it that way. Perhaps most importantly, Apoku Agyamang is back to his feet. Four changes from the side, which defeated Benin. Samuel Coombe is on the bench. Stephen Apia, Sulimuntari, missing through injury. And Jonathan Kwati also dropped, and no place for him on the bench this evening. There's also a possible start for the Hoffenheim man, Isaac Vorsar. As well, there's going to be two minutes of stoppage time to be played at the end of this first half. With 30 seconds into that now. That strong play by Agumang again. It's not a bad ball in towards Matthew Moa. He just can't quite get his head on the end of that, but they're going to have another attacking throw. Ghana is starting to apply some pressure on this Mali side in the dying seconds of this first half. It's going to be another long throw for Harrison Afol. Again, looking for Matthew Moa. Anthony Annan trying to spray the ball out to the right. Paintsill takes over. Essien turns straight into trouble in the form of Seydou Keita. He does ever so well. Lays the ball into the middle to Alfuseni Keita. Now Frederick Canute, but he's given the ball away, apologises immediately. Really is such a brilliant role model, Frederick Canute.
They were very disappointed with their performance at last year's African Cup of Nations. They felt that there was a great potential in the side. The two minutes of stoppage time are up. Cameroonian referee looks at the watch again. Eric Addo thinks about coming to take it quickly. Backs away and the referee decides that that's enough for this first half. So we'll be back with all the second half action, hopefully with some sound. And we'll see you shortly. Don't go away. You're watching myafricanfootball.com. Good evening and welcome back to the National Stadium in Bamako where the second half is just underway here. This match day two of Africa's World Cup qualifiers and it's Mali nil, Ghana nil at halftime. You're watching myafricanfootball.com. You haven't missed anything at the start of this second half. A match of few chances so far. A crucial game for both sides. Most importantly for the home side, the Eagles of Mali, led by Freddy Canute, the Sevilla striker up front. Mentioned just before the halftime break, there are some big name absentees in this Mali side. No Mohamedou Diara, no Mamadou Sissoko, Cedric Conte and Adama Koulibaly also missing from the heart of the host's defence. So Nigerian coach of Mali, Stephen Keshi, has had to do some fast thinking and some rebuilding. And for the moment, it's working. Although there's a shot just wide of the mark. Ghana enjoyed the better of the closing stages of the first half without really forcing Mohamedou Sidibe into a save. Plays his club football in Greece with Ethnikos. The Malian goalkeeper. They have players based all over the world. This Mali side from Bakari Sumari with the Chicago Fire in the USA. Adama Tambura plays his football with Helsingborg. They're the Spanish based, of course. Freddy Canute and Gilla Diara, who's absent. Italian based players as well. Momo Sissoko as well as the AS Roma defender Suleiman Diamantene, who stepped up into the heart of defence today. There's also a place for the number eight, Lasana Fani, who plays his football with El Merek. Qualified for the group stages, of course, of the MTN CAF Champions League, which you can catch right here once that gets underway in mid-July on myafricanfootball.com. Ball in from the left, and the head up. Wide of the mark again, but Ghana looking dangerous in these early stages. Stephen Keshi wants his side to push up, 
playing too deep at the moment, inviting the Black Stars forward. For the moment, Mali really struggling to put their foot on the ball. That's a good challenge from Drissa Diakite. All the way back to Diamutiene. Flicked on by Fanny. Moribo Maiga now with a chance to run at John Pencil. Essien's coming across in support. It's a good ball in behind towards Adama. He cuts it back towards Canute. And it's a very important challenge in the end from the Ghanaian defence. Good play again from Moribo Maiga. He takes the throw quickly. Back out to Fanny. This is better from Mali. Switching play wide. That's asking a lot. Of his inspirational front runner, Freddie Canute. Can't keep that one in play. Stephen Keshi bemoans another loose pass. Harrison Afful up the line. Essien, the touch on. I've mentioned Mali's absent players. Michael Essien is there for Ghana. There was some doubt earlier in the week. But also missing Suleiman Tari, Stephen Apia, Larry Kingston, and Asamoah Gyan. Matthew Omoa robbed of the ball there by Dia Muntene. But he gives it away immediately. Strong play, but forced backwards. Ghana come forward again. Two in the middle to aim for. No way through that time. For Opoku Agyemang. This youngster making his first start with the Black Stars. Maiga does well. Now funny. In fact, it's Alfuseni Keita there getting the ball wide. Canute coming deep. Well, he managed to turn face to goal there, but couldn't find any way through, confronted by three or four white shirts. Dimutene asking a lot of Tambura, who can't keep that one in play. Kingston launches the ball long forward. The flick on. Agumang almost got there. Referee from Cameroon. Mr. Avehe waving play on. Once again, the ball into the feet of Canute. Wide to Mamadou Diallo. A full forced back to his captain, John Menser, and all the way back to Richard Kingston. Hasn't played much club football this year with Wigan. The overlapping run. And it's a cross come shot almost in the end. From Prince Targo. Raiding down that right hand side. And then inside to Eric Addo. Essien. That's a nice turn. That's surely a free kick this time. Timo Tenny waves his arms. So there have been a couple of changes for Mali. We just saw Mamadou Diallo on the bench there. So he's come off at half time. No change so far.
for Milo Rajavec's Ghanaian side. Michael Essien said that a draw away to Mali wouldn't be the worst results. A draw, of course, we'll see Ghana move a point clear at the top of the standings ahead of Bennett. It will, however, leave Mali with just two points from their opening two matches. Michael Essien has stepped off the field there and just called across the field and said it's time for a substitution. Well, that's interesting. He's obviously picked up a knock. And he's decided he can't continue. Long ball forward towards Canute. He's done well. Moribo Maiga switched flanks. Seydou Keita gets the ball back to Maiga. Now he's going to run it out full. Gets it onto the left foot. And it was a good effort. And it's a fine save from Richard Kingston. Well, that's the closest we've come to a goal. And once again, it was Modibo Maiga, the Le Mans forward, causing the problems for Ghana. It's a deep ball in, bodies falling like 10 pins in the area. Play allowed to continue. It's with Tambura. Whips it back into the middle. Danger still not cleared. This time it is all, and that's a dangerous challenge. High feet. The referee coming across. It doesn't look as though there's any lasting damage done there. Well, he's a very demonstrative coach, Stephen Keshi. One of these man managers. Really great motivator. Well, I think, in fact, Michael Essien doesn't want to be substituted. The referee spotted something. John Mensah wants to come and have a word. The referee's just telling him to get on with things. It looks as though he's got some sort of bracelet or something on that left wrist, and the referee has decided it's got to go. So after that moment's confusion, the Ghanaian bench, I don't know if they really need to send a doctor around now. Maybe they need to send a manicurist to go and see what the problem is with Michael Essien. Play continues. Not a bad ball in. The header away by Mensah. And he finds Prince Togo, who's being told to put the ball out of play. Because Mamadou Diallo is flat on the pitch. Well, neither side happy with the referee at the moment. And Ghanaians are circling him once again to try and get this Michael Essien problem solved. Ghana down to 10 men at the moment. Michael Essien finally rejoins. wonder if it wasn't some sort of lucky charm he wore on his left wrist. Whatever it was, it's gone now. He was trying to see if he couldn't get it strapped, I think, and the referee was telling him no, it had to come off. We see lots of players with strappings on their wrists. Canute trying to get his players to step up as well. Having a word with Eric Addo. Prince Togo gives the ball away. Forward to Diallo. Another long one for Canute. To chase. Adu lays the ball into his path, and it's not a bad effort from Canute. Flashing just wide of Kingston's right hand upright.
And after a slow start to this second half, Marley just starting to sharpen the point of their attack. Good header by Afuseni Keita. And very coolly done by John Menser as well. All the way back to Sidibit. Just three changes in this Mali lineup from the one that drew 1 1 away to Sudan in their opening match of this Group D third round qualifier. Mustafa Yatabari, Adama Kulibali, and Sidi Keita all missing. Kanute. Working hard again. Fane. To Alfuseni Keita. Looking to get it forward towards Mamadou Diallo. And he's won the corner kick. Diallo is going to take it himself. Ball towards the back post, volleyed back across, and the header away by Anthony Annan, only as far as Canute, still Canute. And finally, Ghana are able to clear. Harrison are full, up the line towards Prince Togo. It's going to come back again though, Seydou Keita. Switches it towards Diallo, the header down, Canute now. That's a good run. He needed to chip the ball in. Canute was there, waiting for the ball to arrive at the back post. But the little chipped cross from Diallo can only find the side netting. Half an hour to go here in Bamako. The National Stadium in Mali. That's a nice turn again from Modibo Maiga, but he can't feed it through to Diallo. A lot more urgency now in the last few minutes from Mali. Anan, overlapping run from Harrison Afol. No free kick, says the referee. Ghana rebuild again from the back. John Mensa, the captain, nicknamed the Rock of Gibraltar. It's forward to Michael Essien. Anthony Annan switching it wide, but Prince Togo can't keep that one in play. Ghana just struggling to refine their rhythm after that little episode of playing with 10 men. Michael Essien. Off the field for a couple of moments. And it's Marley that are now playing a little bit further up the park as well. That time Modibo Maiga's touch let him down. It's a good defensive header. Good challenge from Essien coming back to help out. Well, now Stephen Keshi's telling his players to get back in position. They've certainly heard him. They're starting to press up the field a little bit more, get more numbers forward, more of a physical presence in the last third of the field, and it has been working. That, of course, doesn't mean that they've got to lose their shape and just throw bodies forward. They can leave that for the last five minutes of this game. The onus is, of course, on Mali to win this one. Keita. Forward to Maiga. 
That's a lovely turn from Canute. Still Frederick Canute. Gets it wide now to Diallo. Glides past his man. Shot on the left boot. Once again, it's wide of the mark. Encouraging signs this, though. Seydou Keita looking to get involved as well, the Barcelona man. And you might not be able to hear them, but I can assure you the crowd are on their feet. And getting right behind Les Aigles, the Eagles. Anthony Annan. It's another ball over the top looking for Agiamang. He was hoping for a corner kick, but the referee pointing to the goal kick. Pencil with the ball forward. Quadro Asamoah losing out, though. To Fanny. Diamuteni up the line. Well defended that time by Anthony Annan. Again, it's a long ball forward. Prince Targo with the foul on Afunseni Keita. Fanny switching play out to the right now. It's another raking switch of play towards Moribo Mega. Diallo, little chip in towards Canute. Diallo again, but he can't control his volleyed cushion pass. It was the difficult option chosen by Mamadou Diallo. Canute, no high feet, says the referee, but Harrison a full with a good challenge. An equally good challenge as well there. Keita and Fanny exchanging passes in midfield. Why to Dear Kite? Say to Keita. Sumari up the line. It's a good ball for Keita. He looks inside. Mamadou Diallo, Canute, the overlapping run from Tambora. The ball in low. And it's Afful that clears his lines again for the Black Stars. Mali just starting to tighten the screw, but for the moment, there's no way through, and they're unable really to test Richard Kingston, produced one fine save at the start of this second half to deny Seydou Keita. Moribo Maiga as well with a good long-range effort. Paintsel towards Amoa, the flick on. Quadwo. That's Amoa, the shot and the goal. Gunner in front. 1-0. It's come against the run of play. And it's the new boy, Quadro Asamoa, with a long-range effort that arrowed into the bottom left-hand corner. The flick on by Matthew Omoa, and Quadro Asamoa did the rest. 1-0 Ghana. was a lovely turn. Well, now Mali have it all to do. There you can see the travelling Black Star supporters. They're crammed in to the away section of the National Stadium here in Bamako. And it was a moment of individual brilliance 
from the new number 10. Only in the side because of various injury absentees. But hasn't he justified his selection by Milovan Rajevac, the Serbian coach with a master stroke? And after enjoying the better of the first half, Ghana was struggling a little bit. That goal probably coming during Mali's best spell of the game. Essien forward. That's a good ball to Agumang. Agumang is still going. He's the other new boy in this side. Stephen Keshi absolutely furious. Don't forget, coming up on myafricanfootball.com in two weeks' time, we've got more African World Cup qualifiers from match day three on the 20th and 21st of the month. As Essien, Essien doing well, Essien shooting. It's spilt by Sidibe. And in the end, he claims it. All of a sudden, the Black Stars waking from their slumber. And then after that match day three, in two weeks' time, my African football will also have every match of the MTN CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederations Cup as well. Live and exclusive on the net. It's a raiding run. He's managed to get the cross in, has he? No, goal kick. According to the Cameroonian linesman on that far side. What a huge step it is as well towards a potential qualification for South Africa 2010 for the Black Stars. Qualified for their first ever World Cup finals tournament. Three years ago now, Germany 2006. That's a nice ball in from Mega, but there's no one there at the back post. And if it stays like this, they'll be clear atop this group T table with six points. Benin with three. And Mali will have just one point will be level with Sudan just the way they were coming into today. And really, they can all but wave goodbye to their chances of being part of that historic event, South Africa 2010. The dream of every African player to play the World Cup on home soil. Maiga, looking forward towards Seydou Keita. And the Barcelona man has gone into the book for that challenge. The ball from Maiga. Anthony Annan that nipped in and then was chopped down by Keita. Essien launching the ball forward. Free kick going against Matthew Omoa there for backing in to Sumari. Diakite, all the way across to Alfuseni Keita, trying to accelerate things out of midfield. Into the feet of Mega, the overlapping run from Tambora. The cross in 
But again, they can't pick out the bodies in the middle for Mali. Mamadou Diallo playing more and more like a second striker now alongside Freddy Canute. That ball allowed to bounce. Amoa getting in there and brushed aside by Dia Muteni. Well, a draw could be considered a negative result for Mali. A loss is a very serious counter performance for this side. They'll be equal bottom of the group, and they really can start planning for Angola 2010 and not South Africa 2010. Harrison Afoul leading the charge for the Black Stars up that left flank. That goal has given them a real swagger. Stroking the ball around, far more in control than they were in the moments leading up to that goal from Quedwo Asamoa, his first international strike. The foul by Eric Adu on Mamadou Diallo. Diallo taken quickly. Still Mamadou Diallo. He's gone down and earned another free kick, and this one is in a far better position. Free kick going against Anthony Annan. Well, Maiga packs a very good shot on him. Seydou Keita is standing over this one. Tambura's there as well. Here comes Mamadou Diallo to have a look at it. Normally it's a good indication of which player places the ball to see who's going to strike it, and it's Mamadou Diallo that's placed the ball. It's a short free-kick routine, which only finds the wall. Dimutene. That's a wasted ball forward. Canute was making the run towards the back post. No problem for Richard Kingston. We're inside the final. 15 minutes now. Ghana leading by a goal to nil. Quadwo Asamoa in the 67th minute. Doing the damage for the Black Stars. Tambura back to Keita. Asking a lot of Diakite, but he does it well. The cross in, cleared by Mensa at the front post. Fanny wide again. That's a good ball into the feet of Modibo Maiga. Cross deflected up in the air. John Paintsell launches the ball into touch. Tambura turns inside. Lays the ball across, but again, they can't find a green shirt in the middle. Foul by Matthew Amoa. On a Fuseni Keita. Diamu Tenet chipping the ball towards Maiga. Cleared rather spectacularly by a full. And the counter-attack is on now. Agyamang leading the charge up that left flank, the number seven. And having done the damage with that sprint up the line, he then turns around and lays it back to his captain, Michael Essien. Well, that might fall to Matthew Omoa. Surely the chance for two. And there it is. 12 minutes to go, and Matthew Omoa has fired the Black Stars into a 2-0 lead.
Well, it was all too easy. Michael Essien, a one-two with the mower on the edge of the area. The ball fell back to Matthew Omoa. And the defence was nowhere to be seen. And poor old Mohamedou Sidibe. Abandoned by his defence, nothing he could do. As Omoa just picked his spot, 2-0. Well, the first goal certainly was a blow to Mali. Had the effect almost of lights out for Stephen Keshi's side. And the second goal has all but written off their chances. Not just of this game, but perhaps even of South Africa 2010. Home soil against the group favourites. If you want to upset them, it's going to be here. Because now for Mali, a third of the way through this Group D qualifying campaign. Each side playing six games, three at home, three away. And if you want to take points off Ghana, it has to be here. It's charging through the middle. Appeals for a penalty. And the Cameroonian referee waving play on. Now for Mali, if they want to finish top, they're relying on other results. Maiga. He's got Diallo inside him. Well, it really... Hasn't worked so far for Mali with Seydou Keita playing that advanced role. His club football with Barcelona, of course, he plays as a defensive midfielder here with Mali. Well, he plays as a defensive midfielder as well, but tonight called upon to be the playmaker, playing just behind Frederic Canute. He just hasn't seen enough of the ball in the final third of the field to try and make the difference. Tambura for Diallo. Chipping it through again towards Seydou Keita. But again, there's no way through. Fanny. Diakite. Fanny again. Too high. Strong challenge by Keita. I think a little bit of frustration there coming out. He's got to be careful. He's just received a booking. In the 70th minute. Doesn't need to do anything foolish. Not only get himself sent off here, but also be suspended for the next match. And that's a rather curious decision from the referees. Decided to give John Pencil a yellow card. Can only assume it's for time-wasting. Very calmly done by the Mali defender, Bakari Sumari. Now, Dimutene launching it long again. It's over Seydou Keita. And Mali have to be careful here because Ghana are leaving numbers forward. Clearly very confident in their defence's ability to hold this Mali side at bay as we see the goal again. That lucky rebound for Matthew Omoa and then all the time in the world. Mensah with a good header. Towards Anan. But it's Keita that comes away with possession. Now Maiga. Still trying to make things happen. Modibo Maiga and he's done well. Still going Modibo Maiga. Lays it back to Tambora. They need a good cross. It's deflected. 
behind and away from Seydou Keita and Mamadou Diallo. Seydou Keita trying to get there, but now Michael Essien in possession. Keita, of course, who with Barcelona got one over Michael Essien in their Champions League semi-final against Chelsea. John Menzer, he had a difficult first season with the outgoing French champions, Olympic Lyonnais. In the end, played very rarely in between injuries and various incidents off the field. Not all of them of his own doing. Keita, again getting the ball onto the left boot, getting a sight at goal, but no way through and it's time for a change. And now Mamadou Diallo is indeed going to make way, it's going to be replaced by Yakuba Diara, another one of these youngsters called up for the first time by Stephen Keshi. Sumari with the header. Fanny helping it on, but only as far as Michael Essien. The flick on from the substitute is looking for Canute. Paints all the way back to his goalkeeper. And the flick on by Moa all the way through to Sidibe. We're inside the final five minutes now. Ghana leading Mali by two goals to nil. Quadwo Asamoa in the 67th minute and Matthew Amoa in the 78th. Mali paying the price for the absence of Cedric Conte, who is in the throes of joining Greek first division side Panathinaikos. And of course, Adama Koulibaly, the Ox Air defender who's missed most of the season, really, with various hamstring, knee and ankle problems. Another chance for Cater, perhaps. Sets his sights, and again he fires high over the bar. Rajevic is preparing for a substitution of his own. He's preparing to bring on Isaac Vossa. Defensive midfielder based in Germany with what for most of the last Bundesliga season looked like being one of the huge surprises of the century. In Hoffenheim, who were leading the league at the midway point of the year. In the end, it was Another team which grabbed all the headlines of surprise of the century. Wolfsburg, of course, winning their first ever Bundesliga crown in Germany. And the Hoffenheim midfielder preparing to come into the game for Ghana. Prince Tago still going battling with Dir Mutene. Just three minutes to go now for Ghana to register a very important victory. Passports, please. For Isaac Vossa. This Prince Targo needs some treatment on that right knee. Well, there's no doubt that this Mali side features when at full strength some of world football's top line players. And unfortunately, just as it was in Ghana 2008, not against Ghana, but at the African Cup of Nations,
in Ghana 2008. They failed to deliver as a team on the big stage. And this is their first real test. They had a relatively comfortable passage through the second round of African zone qualifying. Their first match, the one-all draw away to Sudan. It was not such a bad result, really. Sudan, very hard to beat on home soil. But here... Their first real match against an African powerhouse. And it's going to be the attacking left midfielder, Opoku Agimang, who makes way to be replaced by Vossa. Meanwhile, Prince Tago wants to get back on the field. So Vossa is into the action. And Prince Tago rejoins the action. Seydou Keita now. We're inside the final minute of regulation time here. It's a good ball in behind towards Diara. Across the face of goal. Who was Canute arriving. And really, they've created chances few and far between Mali. And that was possibly the most presentable of the lot. And unfortunately, Frederick Canute... The former West Ham and Tottenham striker now with Sevilla in Spain where he regularly gets on the end of balls like that. He just couldn't quite get there. Strong challenge by Bakary Sumara. Rayovac ringing the changes now. Draman Haminu is going to replace Prince Tago. They're in no rush to get things done. The 90 minutes are up. Ghana, who haven't been in the form of their lives themselves of late. But they're looking to make it two consecutive victories in their Africa zone. Third round, Group D qualifying after that 1-0 victory. Over Benin on match day one. A victory here over Mali. As we see, four minutes of stoppage time to be played. Ghana's next match, of course, is in two weeks' time away to Sudan. And that will be another test of their World Cup credentials. Then they host Sudan in September travel to Benin in October and bring the curtain down on their qualifying campaign at home to Mali in mid-November. And that, when they looked at the fixture list, when the draw was made, they would quite reasonably have thought that they would be playing at home to Mali in a match which could decide who tops the group. That doesn't look now like being the case. We've seen some of the big guns faltering over the course of this qualifying campaign. Gabon leading in Group A. Cameroon and Morocco drew earlier today, so they have one point apiece. And they remain at the bottom of that Group A table. Tunisia are leading the way. Nigeria are there in second place in Group B. As the ball in, headed away again. In Group C as well, Zambia leading the way. With Egypt and Algeria really both needing victory in tonight's huge clash in Bilda to see who will keep pace with this Zambian side. And here we are in Group D with Ghana really just reaffirming their favourite status. While in Group D it's another surprise packet. Burkina Faso have maximum points from their two first games as do 
the Cote d'Ivoire, of course, who defeated Guinea earlier today. Two goals to one. It wasn't as easy as all that. Guinea equalising before the Cote d'Ivoire through Christian Coffey Romerick, another Sevilla player, teammate of Frederick Canute. Got the winning goal for Didier Drogba and Co. We're going to have a substitution here in the final moments. Let's hope that's nothing too serious. We're going to have another minute or two added on to this one. So still everything to play for in these African World Cup qualifiers. There's some real romantic stories as well. The likes of Gabon, Zambia, Burkina Faso. The top side in each of the five groups qualifies directly for South Africa 2010. The top three in each group qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations. Michael Essien, his job here is done. Walks his way off the field. Frederick Canute comes to have a word with the Cameroonian referee. Harrison Afoul. The third and final substitution is made. Musa Nari, it looks like, coming in. Replacing Michael Essien. Sumari. Well, it's all too late for this Mali side. They've just been outclassed, really, in the end. They had a good spell. Ghana getting the first of their two goals. Somewhat against the run of play, you'd have to say. A wonderful strike from Quadwo Asamoah. Midway through this second half. And that really seemed to break Mali's resolve. And since then, it's been all not one-way traffic as such, but certainly plain sailing for the Black Stars' defence. Are we even going to have time for this goal kick? Here is time for Suleiman Dembele, one of the local-based players in this Mali side. He plays his football for Joliba. To play the last couple of seconds. And there does seem to be some concern for that Mali injury. There we see the ambulance arriving. And let's hope that player is not too badly injured because there's another big game for Mali coming up in two weeks' time at home to Benin. The squirrels. The Seydou Keita. Wants to take it a little bit further, but there goes the final whistle. Ghana defeating Mali by two goals to nil. They move top of Group D, three points clear of second place. Benin, Mali and Sudan with one point apiece rooted to the bottom of this Group D table. You've been watching myafricanfootball.com and we hope to see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.